We continue with the second part. We continue with the second part of how to um, have a, a joyful and fruitful ministry at the same time uh, to be burden free. And okay, how do we motivate people? How do we motivate ourselves to serve God? How do we motivate people to to follow God and serve God? And these are four motivations. First, God loves us greatly. He is, uh, God is uh, really, He cares about us. He wants to bless us. And then secondly, we are very precious. God treasures us. God sees that we are important and our lives are precious. And then third point is when we love and obey God, we will be greatly blessed by God and our lives will go to a higher level. So when we love God and obey God, then we become the precious person that God has planned us to be. And then four, if we don't love and obey God, there will be destruction to our lives. The worst scenario is that we can lose our salvation. Now we are saved by grace through faith, but faith must always produce good works. When we have real faith, faith will always produce uh, repentance, trust in God, a relationship with God, uh, loving God, obe obeying God, and serving God will always produce these fruits. And if a person has zero change after he is saved, uh, there is a danger that his faith may not be alive, that he doesn't have saving faith. So the motivation to love God, the first three points are motivation by grace, that God loves us, we are very precious, and then when we love and obey and serve God, we'll be greatly blessed by God and our life will, be, will go to a much higher level. And then the fourth point is the motivation by the law. If a person doesn't serve God, doesn't obey God, then he will have more and more destruction to his life. And the worst scenario is if he doesn't have faith at all, then he could lose his salvation. Okay? And... Um, Okay, now we go to the next point. Ministry that can influence and strengthen our people. How to have effective ministry. The ministry that can influence and strengthen our people. I, uh, uh, I put in the characteristic of a, a growing church as a church that can influence and strengthen the people. That the people are, you know, it's the quality of the people. It's the quality of the people uh, in the church, that's most important. First point is, how can we influence and strengthen them? How do we have strong Christians in the church? First, we accept and love the people, care for their feelings and needs, respect them as precious people, build up a loving group of Christians. So this is very important. The first point is, accept and love the people, care for their feelings and their needs, and respect them as precious people, building up a loving group of Christians to, to help to love them, to care for them, respect them, and build them up to be loving people. Second, build up the spiritual strength of individuals and the church. So whenever we bring someone to Christ, we want to bring them to, uh, to love God, to obey God, to serve God to build up his spiritual strength and build up the spiritual strength of the whole church. We don't just bring people into the church and sit there, but we try to find out uh, the needs of the people, the problems of the people, and how to help them to be strong Christians. Three, use cell group ministry. Now, one time we talk about cell group ministry, I'm going to briefly describe cell group ministry. Cell group ministry is, uh, is that in a church will train cell group leaders. And the cell group leaders, they have to be trained to uh, listen to the people, to care for the people. And in the cell groups, generally there are four W's. Uh, the first is uh, the, the word world, that means to relate to the world, to bring in new people and then to mingle with them. 
so uh, and it could be uh, sometimes it could be all the regular members but we try to connect with them and the second is worship the third is the word that uh, to uh, discuss and apply uh, the sermon last week and then number four is work how to apply and you know uh, live it out in the world and reach out to the people around us to bring them to the cell group and in the cell group uh, the leaders are trained to listen to the people to counsel them respond to them care about them pray for them uh, so it's like a little pastor so in this way the people in the cell group have individual care from the leader and the core members now in the cell group there will be a, a, a cell group leader a sub leader and then there are core members and these core members and the leaders will care for the people and strengthen the faith now the cell group ministry has the strength of utilizing more people in the church to uh, to do spiritual work to do evangelism and to reach out to the people and they are uh, accountable to the to the pastor and to the church that there is a system that they are accountable to and then also there will be uh, groups uh, meetings cell groups of leaders the cell group leaders also have a cell group uh, with the pastor or the leader above them depends on how many cell groups are in a church if there are not too many cell groups then the pastor would have a cell group with the the few cell group leaders now if there are many then the cell groups uh, they have you know uh, district pastors to have meetings with uh, 10 to 15 leaders and then this district pastors have other pastors above them to meet with them and then finally it could be the, the senior pastor so it depends on the on the size how many cell groups there are and there are many there are number of churches with cell groups and that have grown tremendously because cell group ministry is a way that not only the pastor would do ministry but the lay people would do ministry and they care for the people and it builds up the people and then when the people comes in the church they they are welcomed by people and they are follow up by people and strengthened by people and mentored by people that their spiritual life is built up so cell group ministry is good for growth it's good for spiritual help it's good for meeting the needs of the people and it's good for raising up people to serve God so it's a very important uh, effective way of ministry of cell groups but the people have to be trained even the pastor has to be trained in cell groups it's not just teaching it is responding to the people discussing the you know first is responding to the daily life in the sharing they will share about their their life in the past week so this cell group have meetings once a week and then the leaders have another meeting uh, they might not meet every week it, they might meet twice a month or once a month so these people they can talk about the, uh, how their life is how they relate to the people around them how they are uh, changing or how they are affected by other people and then the cell group can respond to them and it's not just teaching it's, it's uh, listening to them accepting them comforting them and guiding the person to find solution and then if it's a serious problem then the, the leader would say uh, we'll have another time with you to talk about this and then the cell group members can also pray together for this person and sometimes they can all lay hand on this person to help him so uh, this is you know cell group ministry uh, is very effective it's very effective for building up uh, 
people who serve God, and these people who serve God will build up other members of the church. Okay, four, train more people to serve God and guide to serve God more, guide them. Okay, there's a them here to serve God more efficiently. That, uh, that we want to train people in a church, not just the pastor do the, to do the ministry, but to train more people. Actually, as many as we can that more people can be trained to be able to counsel people, listen to people, respond to people, pray for people, and help people spiritually, and to do evangelism. So these people, they one day we all face God. It's like in Matthew 25, the two parables. First, how are they using the talents? Second, are they doing good things to the brothers, to Jesus' brothers? So if they are doing these things and they are good and faithful servants. So we want to train more people to be good and faithful servants because we are all accountable to God. The pastor too, he's accountable to God, not only in how he preaches, but in also how he raises up people to serve God, how to train them, guide them, how to help them to serve better, how to uh, help them to be efficient uh, servants of God also. And sometimes this, some of these, these leaders, one day, they might even become pastors. So in cell group churches, it raises up more people to become pastors. And also raise up more people to be uh, interested to do uh, mission work, to go for short-term mission work to other places, to strengthen other churches and help other ministries. Okay, five. Always preach about God's wonderful nature and grace so that people are attracted to God and appreciate God greatly. Lead people to follow God, not to follow people. So this is very important. And, but I'm sad to say that many people are not doing this. That uh, we should be preaching more about God's nature and His grace. Not just preaching about what people should do. But it's a fact that many, many preachers, they preach about what people should do. Now then it's just telling them what to do. But in the Bible it says that we are to, you know, to, uh, to declare the goodness, the praises of Him who uh, brought us out of the darkness into the marvelous light of God. So we are declaring, proclaiming the goodness of God. The, our ministry is not just to teach people to pray and to read the Bible and to obey God. Our ministry is to help people to see how wonderful our God is so that they will like God. They appreciate God. They delight in God. And then they have strength from God. And then they will want to bless people to bring, to tell people how wonderful God is. So that is the ministry the Bible describes. But many people just because Many people are law-oriented. So they just think of what Christians should do. Christ they would just say, you know, they would preach about how we can be saved, how we repent, how we pray, how we praise God, how we obey God and read the Bible, how we do evangelism, so, and how we serve God. So they just tell, talk about how, what we do. But this is not preaching about God. When we just do this, we just tell people what to do. What happens is we create a group of doers, not a group of people who love God, who admire God, who are attracted to God, that who, they are changed by God to demonstrate the life of God. This is what we're supposed to do. For instance, even rejoice, the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord. Actually, the Bible is full of uh, teachings about the work of God. We don't worry. Why? Because even the sparrows, God takes care of. Even the lilies, God clothes them with very uh, 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 beautiful clothing. So Jesus attract people to trust in God by telling them the wonderful work of God. So in the Bible, it talks about how wonderful God is. The whole Bible is about how wonderful God is, how loving He is, how powerful He is, how wise He is, how uh, accepting He is, how He cares about people, how He raises up people, 
how he sees our good works and how he remembers our good works and he rewards us and how he prepare a new heaven and new earth for us and what he's going to do to do the whole world the bible talks about god so when we uh, bring up people we want to bring up people to understand god to know god to believe in god to like god to glorify god to tell people about how god is that is our ministry not just to do things and when people just think of doing things, even many pastors, they think of the ministry as doing things. They think of the, the ministry as praying and teaching the people and doing evangelism and doing meetings. So it's all doing things rather than connected to God. Now, you might say, well, they are connected. Uh, yes, they are. But the, the degree, how much are they connected to God? When they pray, they connect to God, but very often people pray like this, Oh God, please help me. Please give me money. Please provide for us. To Please op help us to have better ministry. It's us. It's not talking about how wonderful God is. In our prayer, we should declare, God, you're so wonderful. You're loving God. You're caring God. And you bless us. You bless all those who follow you. And you are... A wonderful God, you can change our life. Thank you, Lord. We are changed by you. We are joyful because of you. So when we pray, we should be changed by God's nature. And when we preach, we should be preaching about how wonderful God is. Instead of just telling people what to do. And people should be motivated to be attracted by God and to be drawn by God to follow Him instead of just obeying. Okay, so I hope... You agree with this. You read the Bible, you find that in many places it talks about the wonderful work of God. That for instance in uh, Romans chapter 8, it talks about many things God has done for us. That in all these things God works for good for those who love Him. It's God who works for the good of those who love Him. And if God has given us His Son, did not spare His Son to give us, how much more will He also give us all things with Him? And also, it's Jesus Christ who has died for us and is seated in heaven on the right hand side to pray for us. So, no one can condemn us. The reason why we don't have condemnation is because of what Jesus, what Jesus has done. And who can separate us from the love of Christ? It's always love of Christ loving us, loving us. So we want to be connected to the love of Christ. When we read the Bible more carefully, you, you realize that it talks a lot about God. It talks a lot about His nature, His love, His care, His wisdom, His power, His uh, holiness, His wonderful plan, all these things. So I hope that we're all attracted to God. And after I studied the Bible carefully many times, I noticed this teaching and I thank God that He taught me this teaching so that I'm teaching from the Bible. We, not just, we should not be just telling people what to do, but we're telling people who God is, how wonderful He is, how wonderful it is to, for us to delight in Him and see His goodness and follow Him. So, that way, the church will have strength. The church will have power. The church will be able to change people's life when people see the goodness of God. Okay? And a ministry that can influence and strengthen our people. One, uh, six point is lay hand on people and lead them to love God uh, or lead them to love God fervently to help them to experience the Holy Spirit. Train them to experience the train, uh, train them in experience God evangelism train them to build up other people's spiritual life. So, to help people to experience the Holy Spirit. That the Bible has talked about laying hands on people and they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, it's true that people can be filled with the Holy Spirit without laying hands on them. People can experience the Holy Spirit by loving God wholeheartedly, spending longer time to love God. They can experience the Holy Spirit eventually. But laying on of hands is a way that God has given us that we can lay hands on people and help them 
to love God more, help them to experience God more. That many people we lay hand on, they can experience the love of God flowing into them. They can experience the peace of God, the joy of the Lord flowing into them. And that build them up. It's like someone learns to ride the bicycle. We push them and then they can go and then they keep uh, stepping on the pedal and then they can go a longer way. After we push them a number of times, they learn to, to ride the bicycle. So laying on of hands is like that. And the Bible does talk about that. Jesus said, lay hand on the sick and they will be healed. And also uh, Peter and John and Paul, you know, Peter and John went to, um, uh, they, you know, uh, both of them went to um, <clears throat> Samaria, okay? They went to Samaria. And then uh, Paul went to Ephesus and lay hand on the people and they were f uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. So the Bible does talk about laying hand on people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And also uh, Joshua, because Moses has laid hand on him, he was filled with the spirit of wisdom. So the Bible in the Old Testament and New Testament both talk about laying on of hands. So this is some way we can help people. But it's not just laying on of hands. We also lead them to love God, learn to love God from the heart so that they, they can experience the Holy Spirit more and more and train them to experience God evangelism which I talk about in another session. But basically it's like this, that we talk to someone, uh, a non-Christian, and then we tell them that, uh, for instance, they talk about some of the problems. And then we say, uh, I had t that problem too in the past and I was healed by the Holy Spirit. Or someone else had that experience and they were healed by the Holy Spirit. And would you like me to pray for you to experience the work of God? And then when we, after we, when we pray for them, we ask them to open the heart to love God, to hunger for God, to depend on God, to rely on God, to, de to be pleased with God. And then when they open the heart, they can experience more and more peace. And then at the same time, we lay hand on them. And after we pray, we say, <clears throat> now first we have to get the permission to lay hand on them. <clears throat> and after we pray for them, we ask them, uh, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? And if they say they ex experience any of this peace, burdens go away, comfort to the, to the mind, comfort to the body, or healing, or power going through them, or, or demons driven out, uh, or seeing Jesus, any of this, we tell them this is what the Bible describes, how we experience God. He can give us peace. He can give us love. He can give us joy. He can heal us. He can uh, give us uh, inner healing. He can drive out demons. And so God is so real. Do you want God to continue to bless you? If they want to, then we tell them about Jesus' salvation. We don't just tell them how to believe in Jesus. We don't just tell them how to repent of the sin and trust in Jesus. We tell them God became man. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus came to die for our sins, to pay for the penalty of our sins. And then when we trust in Jesus as our Savior, then we can have salvation. So do you want Jesus to give you salvation and He can continue to bless you? So we can pray for people. And then when people experience the work of God, there is a higher percentage that they will re uh, believe in Jesus. And we can also train people in a church to, to be able to use this method of experience God evangelism that they will want to uh, reach out to their neighbors, to their friends, to their relatives and family members and pray for them to experience the Holy Spirit. So that's something we can do that we can uh, train people. And then more people in the church will be strengthened including children, because when children experience the Holy Spirit, they see that God is not just an idea. God is a living God, that they can too experience God. And they can, <clears throat> they, so they, they treasure the relationship with God. Okay, seven, build up a sense of belonging to everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
<coughs> to build up a church is very important to build up a sense of belonging to everyone. The church belongs to everyone. Thank them for everything they do, appreciate them for bringing people to church, give them responsibilities. So all this, tell them this is their church. So they, when they do something for God, for the church, it's wonderful. God treasures them. And then they are blessing the church of God and God is happy with that. And, and they can see people change, that's wonderful. So they see that this is their church. And they can you know, do things to rebuild the church, to clean the church together, to help the people in the church together, to strengthen the faith of the people in the church together, to welcome the people, to do different things. And then we appreciate them. So they, they uh, realize that the church belongs to them. <coughs> <coughs> so the church belongs to them. When people feel a sense of belonging, they will be more committed to the church. If they just think of church as going to listen to a sermon and they go home, they don't have a sense of belonging. They just get something. Usually when they give something to the church, then they have a stronger sense of belonging and we should help them to, to give more to the church. Number eight, lead the people, guide the people, teach the people to respect authority, but not to control them. Now, they respect authority, but not to control people. Not to control them. First Peter five two, shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion but willingly, not by dishonest gain but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. So do not lord over them. That we serve not by compulsion but willingly, not for dishonest gain but for but eagerly and not to lord over them, not to control them, but to guide them and appreciate them and, and make them feel comforted, make them feel strengthened in the church. And uh, now we, we uh, need to teach them to submit to authority, but we don't force them to do it. And we don't push people, force people to do certain things, but we convince them it's beneficial for them to for them to obey uh, the authority and obey the church and and serve God so it's very important and I've seen this extreme that there one there is one extreme that the people don't learn to respect the pastor or respect the church and then the other extreme is that the pastor would be very authoritarian to control the people and the people are like they are ruled like by a ruler instead of being shepherded by a pastor. Okay, now we come to this point, how to be joyful and burden-free ministry. Now, so when we do this, how can we be joyful? How can we be serving God with joy? First, have joy and strength from enjoying God. So we ourselves must have the relationship with God that we have joy from the Lord. And strength from the Lord that when we pray we experience his, his joy and peace and love thank you Lord Jesus you're so wonderful hallelujah praise the Lord the Lord is loving me right now the Lord is blessing me right now so we have joy and strength and we in when we pray we put down all our burdens we let God's joy fill us and we think of the joy of heaven we think of in heaven is so much joy with that we rejoice over God Father, you're so wonderful. We rejoice over you. We, we like you. We enjoy you. We want to follow you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're a wonderful God. So when we pray, we need to learn to how to have joy from the Lord. Now, to me, the key to have joy is to first understand how wonderful God is, to see how wonderful God is and how He has bless us all the time and also remember how how we have experienced him how we how we experience his help his joy and peace and we appreciate that and we put down our burdens don't let our burdens affect us we 
we can in a prayer we can cry out to God hallelujah 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 and let the burdens go out at the same time when we cry out to God hallelujah hallelujah and when the burdens go out it's easier to have joy and um, and sometimes some people they can blow out the burdens all the burdens come out in Jesus name hallelujah all the burdens come out and it can help people when they put down the burdens then it's easier for them to experience the joy of the Lord and we can also think about heaven and say oh if I one day I'll be in heaven I'll be filled with joy I can I can think of the joy and I can laugh now you know laughter is a gift from God now for me the laughter just come out when I think of God hallelujah the joy will come out now for some people they don't have the holy laughter but we can still think of God and then rejoice and say wow one day we'll be in heaven ha 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 <laughs> think of God and then laugh and then think of all the good things God has done in our, our life and and then we laugh and we can think of God's good things and delight in him and laugh and then it's easier for us to experience his joy and have strength. We, we, we notice that when we pray, when we de uh, declare the love of God, when we uh, love God and believe that God is loving us, we'll have more strength. So we ourselves have joy and strength from God. Two, believe that God is more concerned about our ministry than we are. So when we do ministry, it's not our work, it's God's work. We are just a steward. We are just a manager. So we say, this is God's ministry. God cares about it. When we love God and obey God, He will for sure bless the ministry. Now, some people do ministry just for money, just for themselves, for, for their reputation, and they want to steal people from other churches. They want to just charge people for any kind of service. They want money. That is not good. That is not pleasing to God. Now, some of this church might grow because they have healing but what they do is not pleasing to God. They might have done a lot, but God is not pleased with them. So when we are pleased with God, I mean, God is pleased with us. When we do things that God wants us to do, that God will bless our ministry. God will bless our church. So I hope that we believe that God is concerned about the church so I don't have to carry the burdens. Even when we have one or two or three people, Whenever they come, we want to strengthen them that they enjoy God, enjoy the church. They, they are strengthened in the a, in a, uh, ministry. Then they will go and tell other people that it's so wonderful to go to church. And then they will bring more people. So we want to help people to experience the goodness of God, experience the presence of God, experience the strength and the joy from the Lord. And then they will tell more people about God. And then people, God will be happy with this kind of ministry that we treasure each person we see and then God will bless the church and these people will also be happy with the church and they bring more people and then three appreciate and be thankful for the work of God in our lives and the lives of the members publicly appreciate those who are faithful praise ourselves and others so always appreciate and be thankful then we'll be happy thank God that God is working in my life that I have the heart to do evangelism I want to raise up people to serve God. I want to bless more people. I thank God for that. God is working in my life. And then we look at the people's life. They are serving God. They are loving God. I am happy. I am happy for them. They are serving God joyfully. And they are bringing in people. And they are raising up people's spiritual life. And I appreciate them. I like that. Then, then we'll be more joyful. So we can praise and applaud ourselves and other people then everyone will be joyful in the church. Four, rejoice over every blessing. Just work on problems and don't set our eyes on problems. So when we see any blessing, we'll praise God, we rejoice. And then when we see problem, we handle it. We work on it. We fix the problem, but we don't set our eyes on the problem. We don't keep saying, oh, there are some people who don't come to church. We just help them. If they don't come to church, it's their responsibility, but we help them. If they refuse to be helped, we still keep praying for them and keep helping them, but we don't carry a burden. We, you know, we won't die because of them. The church won't die because of them. 
uh, they are important. They are important, but we don't rely on people who continue not to come to church. Now, we, we care about them. It's very important. We care about them. But we don't carry their burdens. We don't say, oh, I'm so hurt because he left the church. We put it down. We say, okay, I just put it in the hand of God. We pray that God would change his, uh, his mind, his life, that uh, God would draw him back. But he really doesn't want to come back. I, I won't feel, you know, I won't continue to feel unhappy about that. I want to put that down and not to be affected by, by the person. And then even in difficult times, believe that God is concerned also. Believe that there will be breakthroughs in Christ. That even when there are difficult times, God can bring breakthroughs. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has taken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. So God has promised us, promised us that no temptation is, you know, is, they are all common to people. And God is faithful that He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. And with the temptation, He will open a way of escape that we will, will be able to bear it. So when we, have, we face difficulties in the church, God will help us to bear it, to be able to go through the difficult times. And the more we rely on God, every time we rejoice when the people come to church, no matter how many people there are, then everyone is strengthened. Then we will... <clears throat> we will be able to put down the problems of the church. And then we'll be looking at the good things, and then we'll have faith that the church will grow for sure. So when people are attracted by God, when people are strengthened by God, when people have good spiritual life, when people have all these qualities, then the church will have more and more strength and more and more joy. And then, it won't affect us. The, uh, any problems won't affect us. Okay. Six, take time to listen to God's guidance to have strength, wisdom, and strategy for ministry. So when we pray, we don't just talk to God. We listen to God. God, what do you want to say to me? Is there something you want to say to me? Please guide me. Please help me. And ask God for guidance. And God can speak to us. God can speak to us and guide us, tell us, give us ideas what, to, how to serve. Seven, learn from other people who are doing well in ministry. Learn from them to, to improve our ministry so that we are more burden-free. Okay? Now, I'm going to conclude, uh, you know, uh, summarize what we talked about today. How to have a... Um, we have this ministry that is uh, fruitful and joyful that we don't carry the burdens. The main idea is that first, it is God's ministry. God cares about the ministry and God is almighty. God is all powerful and God has a plan. God has a plan how to bless each person and if the person follow God's plan and and offer his body as a living sacrifice and do not be conformed to the world but be transformed by the renewing of his mind then he will start to discern the perfect will of God and the more he follow God the more he'll go into the perfect plan of God so God has a wonderful plan for each person he also has a wonderful plan for a whole church because the church is made up of Christians so he has a wonderful plan for each individual and also all the, in, all the individuals together, he has a wonderful plan. He wants to do great things in the, all the lives of the people. So God has a plan. So if we are connected to God and let people see the good things of God, that people are attracted to God, they are not just told to obey. You know, we don't just tell people to obey. We always tell them about the good nature of God how wonderful He is, and how caring He is, how powerful He is, how loving He is, then people are attracted to God. People always see the goodness of God, and then they will be attracted to follow God, 
to obey God and they will be strengthened by God. So the ministry belongs to God and God is responsible for everything and when we delight in God, <coughs> that is the so source of strength. <coughs> <coughs> We don't just believe in God. We believe in God and we delight in God. We count all the blessings. Then we are happy who God is. We are happy with God's nature, with God's love and His grace. Then we'll be always demonstrating <coughs> Then we are always declaring to people how good God is. And then when people pray, they experience God, we tell them, you have experienced the work of God. See how wonderful God is? God is a caring God. God is a joyful God. God is a loving God. That is why you experience this healing, this comfort, this peace, this help, or this joy and this love because God loves you. So you want to be, we want to be appreciative to God and then you'll be blessed by God more and more. So we ourselves experience God all the time and we help the people to experience God all the time, not just by laying on, on of hands, but we teach them how to experience God themselves. So they are strengthened by God. So they are attracted by God. They want to follow God. They want to glorify God. So when we have a church like this, the church will be full of strength. The church will be uh, full of power and these people will train them to serve God. We train them to glorify God. So I hope you all learn this. Our ministry is about God. It's about glorifying God, telling people how wonderful God is, telling people how God is working in our lives and we can experience Him, anyone can experience Him. So we all experience God and we all will be joyful in the Lord. We are strengthened by God and then we train other people to be strengthened by God and they serve God and when they serve God and bring someone to Jesus, they, they will feel very happy when they can bring someone to Jesus. And we help them how to follow up on this person to help the person to become a strong Christian. And we treasure each person who comes in the church. And we help the people to treasure each one. So we help the people to welcome the people. Anyone comes in the church, not just one person welcome, but everyone welcome the person to let the person feel welcome. So everyone have a strong sense of belonging. They want to bless these people who come in the church and they help them and they encourage them. Then we are all building the church, the body of Christ together and they all have a sense of belonging. And God promises us, if we are living like that, when we are living, you know, when we abide in Christ, He will abide in us and will bear much fruit. And when we delight in Him, then He will respond to, you know, He will uh, uh, give us the things we ask for, that we desire, and also He will raise us, raise us up to a high level. So when we follow God and obey God and serve God even when we do a little thing for God God is very happy and he will for sure bless us and use our life greatly so doing ministry is joyful doing ministry is joyful and I hope you all say that yes it's joyful because God is a joyful God God is a loving God God is a God who blesses us God is so good so we all are attracted by God and we help people to see God and not to control them. We're not letting, we're not letting see the pastor only. We let them see God through us. They are not attracted just to the pastor. They're attracted to Jesus through us. But when the, we have this leadership, the leadership of joy and care and love for people will be able to attract people to God. At the same time, we are happy for everything. Now, there might be difficulties in ministry. There might be people who disobey. Then we want to talk to them and guide them to repentance. 
we tell them, you know, your life is precious. If you obey God and love God and have a good relationship with God and serve God, God will be happy with you and God will bless your life and it will be good for you. So do you want to experience the goodness of God? And if the person continues sin, we can warn them. So first we guide them, we tell them the goodness of God. If the person doesn't repent, we tell them that, you know, he who sows to the flesh will reap destruction. He can reap destruction in his marriage, in his personal relationship, in his finance, in his health, in everything, and in his eternal life, that he can lose his eternal life. So we want to tell people that, you know, it's good to follow God, and then at the same time we can give them warning. But the warning is not our main teaching. And as, as I said, the main teaching is the grace of God to motivate us, the love of God to motivate us, to motivate us to love God more. And the warning is just a small part. You know, some people say, we have to warn people before they obey. You know, people are not animals. They're not, uh, you know, they, they, uh, even, I want to say even dogs, respond to love and care more than to beating. You want the dogs to obey you? You love them, you care about them, they, they are happy to see you every time. So the same with people. When we are kind to people, we love people, we care about them, they are attracted to us. And they are att attracted to our lifestyle. And they wonder how we have so much strength. And then they will change. But if we see them, we just yell at them and beat them and force them and command them to do things. They feel like a slave. Nobody likes to serve God like a slave. But they want to serve God as someone treasured by God and treasured by the pastor and the leaders. That we treasure them. And then they are attracted to our ministry. And then we'll be happy. We enjoy ministry. We enjoy helping everyone. Every time we talk to someone, we enjoy it. We enjoy seeing people change. We enjoy helping people. We enjoy seeing people save. We enjoy seeing people grow. So that's how we do ministry and then it will be joyful ministry, peaceful ministry and light, burden-free ministry because God will take care of it. And then when people are attracted to God, they will be attracted to the church. They want to come to church. Now, as I said, there could be people who are destructive. Then we talk to them and warn them and we first guide them, and then if they don't listen, we warn them, but we don't warn them like uh, warning a slave, but we want to warn them, you know, it's for your good that you, I don't want you to lose your salvation. I want you to enjoy God and be strengthened by God. I want you to have strength. So we warn them in a gentle way, and we still tell them, I care about you. I want to help you. I want to raise up your spiritual life. So we keep on helping people to strengthen them and then we let them rejoice together in the ministry they, they will be re rejoicing over any newcomers we help the church also to be a welcoming church that we see anyone come to church everyone go and welcome them introduce themselves and welcome this person so that people feel welcome so that people feel the love of God and then the whole church will be full of love and full of care and people would like to come to a church like that and then we'll have freedom we have strength we'll have joy and it's enjoyable okay so god bless you i hope that you can apply what i teach and i want you to to get the certificate actually in uh, i want to make it you know, that everyone should do assignment. Assignments is for your good. Because you just listen to me, you'll forget what I said. For instance, today, can you rephrase what I said and s put it in your words? Can you write in a message to help people, uh, to help yourself 
to be joyful serving God and to help your church members how to serve God with joy, how to help a Christian to serve God with joy, and, and how to help people to look at the goodness of God, look at all the good things God has done in nature, in uh, sending Jesus to die for us, in the work of the Holy Spirit to guide us, in accepting us, in changing our life, in blessing our life, in comforting our, our life. So all these things God is doing in our life, we should be joyful of those, happy because of those things, and we delight in God, and, we, and then God is delighted with us, God is happy with us, and then God will bless our whole life. So I hope we all rejoice in God and delight in God, and, and actually that way we'll have better results. We have better results in our ministry. We'll be more effective. And when the, we train a number of leaders to care for people, so we want to spot leaders individually. When we notice some people care for people, we want to spot them and strengthen them, them and help them. Help them to, uh, to care for people, to have the heart to pray for people, to have the heart to to visit people, to build up people's spiritual life. So when people, one by one, they are raised up to serve God, then we are raising up people to build up the kingdom of God and to build up the church. And then the church will be strong. And then help these people to be committed to the church. Now there are people, who, we bring them to Christ and then we strengthen them and then they will want to take some people and go away and start their own ministry. Now we can teach the people and say, you know, if you want, you want to do ministry, you want to do ministry with the blessing of this church. If you want, really want to do ministry, then you want to do it with the blessing of this church. Because if you steal people from this church, God doesn't like that. There are some people who steal a number of people from the church and start his own church. God doesn't like that. God likes it when we have the approval of the church, when we have the blessing of the church, when we do it publicly, that someone wants to start a ministry. That's fine. That's great. If a church can produce ministers, that is great. So we want to train this person so that he can do minister, ministry better, and then we can help them to do ministry better instead of having them steal some people and start his own ministry. So people need to learn uh, the bad consequences of sins, of stealing people from the church or breaking up a church. All these are sins. So people need to understand when we follow God and obey God, God is very happy with us. But when we break up a church, we split up a church, we steal people from a church, God is not happy with us. So we can train people that, you know, if they are doing ministry and they start by stealing, it's not a good start. It's like if I use an illustration, someone marries someone by stealing someone's wife. That is not a good start. He's going to suffer because God is not pleased with him when he steals someone's wife and marries the, someone else's wife. That is not a good way of starting a marriage. And it's not a good way to start a, a church by stealing people from a church. We want to do it in a glorious way, in a way that is it glorifies God and it also strengthens the people. Okay, so I hope this training today is, is very important and I hope you can watch it again, that you can apply it and it's very helpful to our ministry and to our life. Okay, let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you because you are a loving God. You are a God who cares about our ministry. Our, min our ministry is your ministry. You want, you want to build up the churches. We want, you want to strengthen the churches. You want to save people in the churches. You want to raise up people's spiritual life in the church. You don't just save people, but you want to raise up the spiritual life so that they can serve God, so that they can bless more people, so that the life can be used by God. Oh Lord, you want, you have a wonderful plan in each individual. And you also have a wonderful plan for each church. You want to bless the church, you have a plan to bless the church. When we follow you, when we glorify you all the time, 
when we delight in you, when we always count your blessings and tell people how wonderful God is, then God is attracted by, by our words. They are attracted by God yourself. They are attracted to come to God and they would delight in God and, they, and then God, you will be delighted with them and you will bless them and you bless our ministry. Help us to see your goodness. Help us to enjoy you. Help us to like you, to appreciate you, to enjoy you, to rely on you, to obey you and serve you and glorify you all the time. We want to tell people how wonderful God is. We want to tell people how wonderful God is, how good God is, how loving God is, how wise God is, how, uh, how He has wonderful plans in our life and in the, in the whole world. God, you are so wonderful. We want to follow you. We want to obey you and serve you. We want to serve God with joy and peace and love. We want to care about people. We want to care about your church. We want to bless your church. We don't want to do anything that harms, harms the church. We want, don't want to do anything that harms the people. We want the people always remember the church as a place of love, of care, of following God, of glorifying God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're so good. We want to follow you and love you. Please fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with joy. Fill us with freedom. Fill us with strength, with wisdom to serve you and love you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. We love you. We obey you. We follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, God bless you all. And uh, if you have questions, uh, please, um, if you have question, you can send it to me now and I can answer your question. Um, if you have any question right now, and uh, now if you have other questions, you can send them to me later and then I will answer you too. Actually, my message today is responding to one person's question and uh, and I hope that it will help you and my main point I hope you remember we our duty our responsibility our ministry is to glorify God to tell people how wonderful God is to then to attract people to follow God and glorify God our ministry is not just telling people what to do it's telling people how wonderful God is and how God will remember everything we do for Him. How God treasure us. How God, uh, He will reward us for everything we do for Him. So we are motivated by God's grace that we are attracted to Him. We delight in Him. We like Him. We want to glorify Him. We want to tell people how wonderful God is. And then we want to do things to please God. This is ministry. It's not just telling people you pray, you read the Bible, you obey God. It's just, it just like telling people to do tasks. Christianity is not just about doing tasks. Christianity is about seeing how wonderful God is, that people are attracted to Him and serve Him and glorify Him and tell people how wonderful God is and, and so that people are attracted to God and serve God and love God and enjoy God. We should enjoy God. We should enjoy the goodness of God, enjoy the grace of God, enjoy the love of God to serve God like that. Okay? God bless you all and God be with you. And, uh, okay, I hope more people would write messages or teachings that can, you know, summarize what I talk about today. Today I have talked about some of the main teachings I have taught. So I hope you will, you know, understand it and then you write it to me and summarize it and, and, and write down how you can help people to understand this and how, how it helps you to serve God with joy and freedom and also at the same time that your ministry is fruitful. Okay, God bless you.